Good morning, everybody. I think you know who it is. Uh, I did a vid uh, two days ago for the garden, but I did it in the middle of the day when the sun was bright. Looked at the video after and it looked like crap. So uh, we're just just before 6 a.m., I think. And, <coughs> pardon me. And so it's a, a much better time. The lighting's better for doing a, a little garden tour. So <clears throat> this side over here, uh, I added some more grasses and fescue and more lavender you can see in the front here so that'll look nice in a couple of weeks when the lavender is blooming right right la have our lavender expert so this has gotten quite a bit bigger the succulent garden um i added in the fall i bought quite a few more cactus and uh, agave so uh, i did a few different things in here so i'll just walk slow and and talk and you can all take a little look at these little boxes some of you have seen this before some haven't uh, i do i do love agaves there's so many different kinds and they're pretty darn hardy they all have to come in in the winter time of course uh this apuntia that's the <coughs> cactus it's native to here they can stay out uh, all year uh, i did something different too was these i can't remember if i talked about this or not or posted a picture uh, I, I might just be an old guy repeating myself here, so bear with me if I am. So these tufa stones, I got these three large tufa stones, and I've chiseled them out and actually planted inside of the, uh, of the stone. They're pretty cool. They're really porous. Like, you can pour water on here, and it'll just run right through the rock. So it's kind of interesting sort of living rock idea, I guess. So these were just put in a, a couple weeks back so by the end of the summer they should be quite big there's a crazy everybody seems to like that one it's called a blue candle cactus looks sort of alien doesn't it <clears throat> these are kind of cool beaver tail cactus they're called when i planted this year when i brought everything out and when i planted my garden the very next day it was 34 degrees Celsius. Um, I had hardened off some of the cactus, but uh, some of them did get some really bad scarring. You can see here, they, they do get a sunburn. It's too bad it got that hot that quick, uh, but I'm pretty confident they're so resilient succulents that uh, I'm sure they'll all come back again. That's called topsy-turvy, that guy there. African chandelier, they call it. This is the uh, the rude cactus. Well, I don't know why you call it that. My favorite, the barrel cactus. Got a big aloe in the front there. More agave. If you remember last year, that big agave that I had it died last year so this is I think I showed this last year here's here's an example of the sunburn can you see those bottom leaves but you see the center is coming back nicely so it'll repair itself they're pretty resilient uh, this was an old I think we talked about this last year an old Williams sewing machine with the top just thrown on it there Kind of cool. Elderberry trees are blooming. Pretty really pretty. I have no idea. I have the same variety at the house, but the flowers are pink. And here at work, uh, it's white, so it might have something to do with soil pH levels or something. And this is going to be exciting. The Asiatic lilies uh, are really close, probably in the next couple of days here. I think they're going to start blooming. Uh, they've really, it's almost triple the size from last year, so it's going to be pretty cool. So here's the big wet garden, and I can't remember who was asking the other day uh, about the butter burr. That's the butter burr right there, the variegated one. The leaves this year are, are massive. Uh, I don't quite know why they've gotten so big, but uh, it is a bit invasive plant but you can easily there's little rhizomes that you can pull out they're quite easy to take care of you can see i've got a big japanese 
rhubarb beside it and a little one smaller one beside that and the ligularia and I think that like the butterbur is from that same family <clears throat> pardon me sorry <coughs> it's so early in the morning I haven't talked yet <laughs> a little groggy um, so yeah this is the high water need garden here it gets water twice a day like early this morning now and then it'll get uh, water again in the afternoon uh, like we were talking to Stuck or Stuck with his 51 inch over there there's my one gunner the one on the left <clears throat> isn't looking too good but uh, it might have got a little I, I, un I took the mulch off way too early this year and we got a couple hard frosts after and I think it, it hurt it a bit but it, it's trying to come back so uh, uh, it's, it's looking not bad it's coming along but compared to the other one that's uh, Brugensia my compost pile and this is just for the house this is uh, this pumpkin and beans I cut back on how many bean plants this year last year I think I mentioned I had nearly 180 pounds of beans and my wife is going oh okay enough that's enough in the freezer and uh, some cucumbers long English cucumbers and zucchini or gorgettes drama gorgettes and there must have been that's can you see the bird seed in the corner there must be a predator around this morning because there's no birds here at all which is really strange so there uh, must be something around there's a little feral cat that hangs around here could have been stalking around this morning <coughs> there's the old forklift lifesaver so some of you are on facebook you've probably seen this before last year i showed uh that I'd built the fence, but I hadn't uh, put it all together here yet. So uh, I dragged out the old sulky, put a few little succulents in it there, little hens and chicks, the sempervium. So this is what I've done. The white boxes are old uh, vintage bee boxes, and I've used those for the frames, like on the other garden there. And then I've sort of framed everything in with... Uh, that's curly willow, the big long ones, and then the short ones is uh, corkscrew hazelnut, or they call it Harry Louder's walking stick is another name for the tree. Uh, I, I think they're just cool. They're, uh, they're like a genetic defect, so one, one side of the bark grows faster than the other, but they're, they're so cool looking. And what it is, is I built this to hide all of my, my supplies are in there, and I just always thought it looked kind of yucky so we threw this together with some vintage pots and pans and blocks and tackles and shovels and whatever I can get my hands on. So I'll just give you another kind of look. That's called a crested cactus. Odd looking, gets these crazy looking. It doesn't have any yet. Little pink flowers across the top. Uh, oh, it looks like they're just starting to come out. You can see on the top edge there. Uh, Mamarillia, that's cold. And I do like these kind. It's, uh, there's a whole bunch. It's a monstros, they're called. Uh, cactus, just kind of crazy looking things. Like me, crazy looking. Got the spring buck skull out there. Some more agave and a puntia. I call this the, the grandpa cactus because this was my dad's. And he had that poor thing for years and years, and I cut it in half and stuck it in here. Uh, and it's doing well. I think of him every time I come out here and look at that. And here's a couple, it's called Silver Torch. This big tall one. A smaller version down there, and then another agave. Call that the good luck plant, they're called, or good luck cactus. I think I just bought that one a couple weeks ago. I'm getting bad, it's another obsession here now. <laughs> These are kind of cool. I think that one's called bunny tails. That's kind of a crazy looking thing, isn't it? I do like them, because they're pretty hardy. me okay and that's it for the cactus section so 
we'll come back to this side here. So, like I was saying, the elderberry are all blooming. I've got three. There's one there. This one in front of me. And the one way down there you can see behind the little sculpture. So, it's getting lush back here. Just finished moving, or, uh, bloom the allium, or just finished. I have to get in there and cut them all back. That's my wife's favorite. Uh, foxtail lilies. You can see these poking up here. They're getting ready to bloom pretty quick. Next couple of days. So I think I showed last year I dug a hole for a pond. It's still a hole. <laughs> so we'll see how the year goes. It's uh, I used to get freaked out about stuff like this, but uh, I just sort of let it happen now. When I get the time, I'll get back out here and bang away at it. You can only have so much time in a day. Hostas are doing good. And the Ligularia, that's that big one that I have. Doing well. Like I mentioned the other day, still haven't done a leaf. And as you can see, the, the rhubarb is already starting to... Trying to say goodnight, so I don't know if I'll even get a rhubarb in. I hope I will. I might leave a few stragglers on. And My daughter likes cooking up the rhubarb, so I might whack a bunch for her there. Castor beans... Uh, and that's interesting, this one here was, uh, grew on its own, so there must have been a seed pod must have fallen, and I was quite surprised that it came up on its own after, you know, when it's minus 20-something Celsius, and, uh, interesting to know that they survive, and it's quite robust, like it looks, compared to the, the other planted ones, um, it's like double the size easily, so, interesting. And that's the big variety in the back there. Uh, I'm trying to remember now. One is Zanzibar, and I'm trying to remember the name of the other one. Uh, two different varieties. The one in the back gets the, the much bigger leaves. These ones are like that copper colored. Uh, I like them because it's just a cool filler in your garden. Uh, Japanese rhubarb. I don't know if you're a geek like me. I used to always come out and take pictures when they start changing color like this just to uh, get an idea for when you're painting to try and imitate nature a little bit. I, I kind of like those red hues and the yellows that start popping in. More rhubarb in the back there. What have I got down there? I think that's uh, cantaloupe on the two cantaloupe plants and a couple butternut squash. Here is some strawberries and tomatoes. I think I got 16 tomato plants again. I always say I'm not going to. Uh, this is the cabbage I use. Um, we're Rosa and Melissa. It's coming up. That's a cabbage that came up on its own, so I'm just leaving it from last year. But uh, they're doing well. I think these are more I think there's a spaghetti squash. And some stray strawberry I got from there to there. Uh, peppers or capsicum, all different varieties, colors, uh, snap peas, <laughs> and I made the mistake of using seed from last year, and you can see what the result is, <laughs> not very good, shouldn't do that, uh, I think that's more spaghetti squash and some acorn squash, <clears throat> and more strawberries, and these are the kind that uh, are white, and tastes like pineapple. I know that sounds weird, but uh, that's what they are. They're getting close. Just something different. Onions. And into the greenhouse. So I don't know if, if you notice, uh, like by Stuck's picture there too, of the Gunra, there's a big difference I find when you grow them indoors as opposed to outdoors. The leaf, when they're growing indoors, is quite flat. Can you see that? And when they're, when they're growing outside, they're much more shape and life to them. So it's obviously some sort of a, a lighting or sunlight issue. But uh, they're doing good. I've got uh, a few of them going here in pots. I do intend to doing more of these. I think I'm almost right out. I think I have a couple in the store, I think two or three and uh, yeah I definitely need to do some this year it's the big uh, split leaf philodendron 
Monster, still doing well. The Sago Palm, just for fun. And there's the Elephant Ear. And they do well. They're just super resilient. It's hard to believe those are in my shop, covered with fiberglass dust and concrete dust, and they bounce back every year. Awesome. Sun's just starting to pop up over the rise here. So I showed this quick. So these might either be, I won't tell you the big long convoluted story with these. Um, these could be either a permanent addition or a temporary or a partial. We'll see what's going on. Uh, helping out a friend with just location, relocation here. Uh, I think they're just starting to wake up in the morning. I find them super interesting and something I've always wanted to do or to learn about and really jumped at the opportunity to uh, help out this friend of ours with, uh, with the honeybees and like I said she's going to get me in a bee suit and we'll try it out, we'll see if anybody's awake here this morning, this is usually one of the active hives here, they're waking up. Uh, really interesting. I can't believe all the things I've learned already about them. They're an interesting little beastie. Um, early morning, it's okay to stand here. Uh, at about 2 in the afternoon, I wouldn't, because <laughs> I'd have a big problem. But uh, they're a little docile in the morning. I mean, they're docile anyway. I think 90-something percent of all bee stings are accidental with honeybees. And uh, Anyway, I'll keep you posted on that. If I collect honey or something, I might do a little side video. But there you go, folks. That's the whole garden. A little expanded. It's fun. My little zen place. My escape. Hope you enjoyed the tour. And I think in a couple of days, we'll probably do a store tour. Okie dokie, folks. Over and out.